arguably PhDs are getting easier than ever to actually get, but I think that getting a PhD that is worthwhile and will positively impact your life afterwards is getting more difficult. In this video, I wanna split down all of the different components about whether or not a PhD is getting harder to obtain. During a PhD, is it harder to find the research gaps? Is it even harder to get a sort of uh, a fulfilling career at the end of your PhD? That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. And once again, I found some data to pack up what I'm saying and it's a, it's a mess. Like everything, like all these questions, it's a bloody mess. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more is exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now. All right then, getting into a PhD. Arguably, it is easier than ever to get into a PhD position. There are more universities offering PhD qualifications and also I really feel like universities rely on PhD students, the cheap labor in the lab doing research, producing papers. They could not do what they are doing if they were paying a true wage to uh, research professionals like postdocs or research assistants. Um, and so therefore, I think the PhD is becoming easier to get because the universities need to fill that bottom rung of the academic ladder so that all of the uh, academic kudos and prowess and research can filter up and make them look better. Now, if I look at what people have been saying over the past few years, that would back me up. In Nature, published in 2011, it says, Reform the PhD, written by Mark Taylor. So he opens up by saying, there are too many doctoral programs in uh, producing too many PhDs for the job market. Shut some and change the rest. Now that is a big statement, is it not? The system of PhD, and this is in the United States and many other countries, is broken and unsustainable and needs to be reconceived. In many fields, it creates a cruel fantasy of future employment that promotes the self-interest of the faculty members at the expense of the students. The reality is that there are very few jobs for people who might have to spend up to 12 years on their degrees, absolutely. Now this program, a PhD, has been designed in the Middle Ages to produce more academics. I think in today's modern world, um, the PhD no longer serves that purpose. It is about pushing those people out into the workforce. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. What are your job prospects actually like? There's other things as well. The future job market for PhDs. This was actually written in 1971. I can't believe it. So here, they are saying that there's an increased rate of PhD production and that raises policy issues for universities and government. And so here they say that we can't just have um, people saying, well, you know, these PhDs will find their way, you know, uh, it's too hard to stop them getting into university programs, all that sort of stuff. What he was saying back in 1971 is that yes, it's a really tough decision to actually say, you know what, we don't need this many people. The universities are not gonna like it. There's gonna be a lot of backlash, but but he says that they are of the opinion that these problems must be faced and that long range imbalance, inequalities and strains arising from ignoring the problem will far outweigh the stresses generated by the efforts to cope with it. Just insane. So yes, I feel like getting into a PhD is easier than ever. However, there's so much more that goes into it. Getting in is the first step, but does it get harder once you're in or once you're out the other side? If you're doing a PhD, you need something to do a PhD on. Is it actually getting harder to find the gaps in research? Now go check out my other video where I talked about finding gaps in research. I think we are well beyond finding holes in research in the past. So many eyes have been focused on research by so many students, so many academics, that we can no longer just kind of go, oh look, there's a nice little comfortable hole for me to plop my research in. I feel like now we are all looking on the cutting edge of research all the time. We have to think about the edge of research, and I talk about it in that video, looking like sort of like tendrils that are kind of coming out from the edge of knowledge. And the gaps we're looking for is either between the tendrils or at the ends of the tendrils. That is where, really where we're looking. Is it harder to find research gaps? I would say that it is probably 
much harder to find the easy, low-hanging fruit studies than it was in the past. But it doesn't mean that there isn't excellent studies to be done at the current time. There is always more we can know about almost everything. So I feel like it is just as hard or just as easy, whatever way you want to frame it, to find a research gap today. And in fact, with tools like Illicit, with like, which was only introduced to me recently that I absolutely love, um, Connected Papers, Research Rabbit, and Lit Maps, all of those tools allow you to find those research gaps and look at how the papers are connected. So it's probably easier now to get a broad overview of the literature than it was in the past. You had to create your own sort of Excel spreadsheets, you have to uh, create your own reading list and connect them in your mind. Now it's all done for you visually and you can even do semantic searches now on uh, research papers, which is incredible. So research gaps, maybe it's a bit easier to find them, but in the past they were kind of bigger and more obvious. So I guess that balances out, doesn't it? When you're in a PhD system, are the expectations harder on you than they were in the past? Now, from my experience, I would say that this is a yes. I feel like the standard expected of PhD students has increased almost exponentially from the time I did my PhD to the time that I was doing a postdoc at a university. I saw that the expectations on the PhD students increased a lot. They were not only just expected to do their own research, but they were also expected to take on all these other activities as well. You know, the, the adage of, oh, it will look great on your CV, start organizing events, start taking on stuff for their supervisor. I feel like the expectation to publish also is incredibly high these days because you are competing with PhD students globally that are in massive research groups that are all putting their names on each other's papers. I heard of PhD students graduating with like 10 or 20 papers. That's just insane. I graduated with three and that was even just like, oh, well, well, I'll just do it because this is what's expected of me. So the expectations, I think, of uh, how a PhD researcher conducts research and the outputs they're expected to create is much harder than it was in the past. And that's because the competition from everywhere has just sort of like leveled up and leveled up and creeped up um, over time. So yeah, once you're in an academic sort of uh, PhD situation, you really have to hit the ground running and not waste any time if you want your PhD to be valuable to you at the end. Let's talk about job prospects. This is where it gets a little bit sad. PhDs in the past were your ticket to an academic career or in industry or government. These days, it is much harder to get a valuable PhD that is worth something to your future career, that has a concrete positive impact on what you're doing in the future. That's not to say that your PhD is worthless because there's loads of sort of side skills and stuff that you get while doing a PhD. However, to have something that just will concretely reward you in in the future is much, much more challenging. Not only because you have to produce loads of papers during your PhD, but also the people out there don't really care too much. There's papers as well about this. This was published in 2000. And it says it is becoming more and more difficult for PhD graduates to find jobs corresponding to their qualifications. Their analysis shows that the trajectories are not flexible and the PhD graduates have to choose a trajectory when their level of information is at the lowest. When you get kicked out of a PhD, you've worked so hard, you know, you're sort of tunnel visioned into your research. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's no space for you in the inn, in the academic inn. So time for you to leave, please, mate. Um, and then you have to go, oh God, do I go back to the private sector? Do I could carry on? Do I get a postdoc position? Like it's just not really well sort of like uh, curated for you to leave academ uh, uh, academia and your PhD nicely. When they choose their first job after completing their PhD, the cost of switching from academia to the private sector or vice versa depends on whether or not they collaborated with the private sector during their PhD and the intensity of publication. You have to publish a lot to stay in academia or you have to sort of network a lot with 
your industry partners or with industry in general during your PhD to find that transition as smooth as possible. And that's really tough because you're either focused on one or the other. And then while you're in that process, you can't really decide, well, should I be networking more with industry? So should I be publishing more? You just don't know. And uh, it's more and more difficult to find a job in your field. And uh, I think, you know, this was written in 2000 and I feel like it's only got worse. So job prospects for PhDs is a challenging topic. All right, is it harder to get a PhD? Because these days we've got our phones. We've got lots of different distractions to keep us from procrastinating. When I was doing my PhD back in the day, I actually didn't have a smartphone. I just had like a normal phone that called and text. Now I feel like this would be so distracting to me that I would almost certainly have procrastinated far more and I would be comparing myself to others through social media and I would feel worse about my current situation than I did when I didn't know anything about that when I was doing my PhD. So I found some science. Essentially, there's loads of different self-sabotaging behaviors and we need to think about when you're doing a PhD, have these got worse? So overcommitting, busyness, perfectionism, procrastination, disorganization, not putting in effort and choosing performance debilitating cir uh, circumstances. So all of these are self-sabotaging behaviors that PhD students and anyone in highly sort of like academic competitive fields undergo because it's easy to tell yourself a narrative about that failure than it is and self-sabotage than it is to really try and fail. We've all done it, we've all been there. I'm probably doing a little bit of it now, but what does the data say? Does social media itself actually cause you to sort of pro um, procrastinate more or anything like that? There's more data, yes, more data. Can you believe it? I found this study out from 2017 and it says, the results revealed that there was no significant difference between the usage of social media and procrastination. However, good word, based on the uh, whatever scale analyzed, we observed that the majority of students agreed that using social media led to procrastination. They just did what I thought, which was, yeah, of course it would, but there's no evidence to suggest that it actually increases the amount of um, procrastination. So overcommitment, procrastination, and perfectionism. Uh, perfectionism. I feel like the current situation and the current technology available to PhD students in their private lives are probably not helping. And I know, maybe you can help me find evidence on this, but from what I've seen, I would say that it's probably true that there's been an increase in hardship due to the fact that you are more likely to self-sabotage because of the information available to you as a PhD student. When I was doing my PhD, I wasn't caring what other people were, were publishing, really. I only found out about that much later. But I was just sort of like, you know, on my way, doing my little bits towards my research. So yeah, I think that there is a little bit of a change and it is a little bit harder due to social media, due to um, people's ability to get information about what other people are up to and comparing yourself to those other people, I think that would increase self-sabotaging behavior. So there we have it. There's everything I think you need to know about whether or not PhDs are getting harder. And I certainly think that it's easier to get a PhD, but getting a PhD that's valuable to your career in the future is much harder and maybe even harder than it's ever been. Let me know in the comments what you think. And also remember to go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. And I'll see you in the next video.